हेलो अनिल गुड आफ्टरनून आर यू एबल टू हियर जी सर जी सर जी सर नमस्ते सर नमस्ते गुड आफ्टरनून जनरल बिंदल सर गुड आफ्टरनून एंड हार्टियस कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच वंडरफुल टू सी यू यू नो ऑफ कोर्स सर वी बी स्टार्टिंग विद आवर फेस टू फेस प्रोग्राम्स वेरी सून then again yeah. we will start seeing you sir uh, yeah for a long time we have not met yeah we have not but uh, i have been keeping in touch with the great work you are doing sir sir thank you so much sir. we are so privileged that you are here today sir no it's, it's my privilege in fact we have a very close yeah and uh, pp shwaso sir shwaso sir namaste हर्षित श्रीवास्तव सर का वीडियो ऑन कर दीजिए वीडियो एंड ऑडियो दोनों जी हेलो हाँ नमस्ते सर श्रीवास्तव सर नमस्कार अच्छा श्रीवास्तव साहब का वीडियो नहीं दिख रहा है आवाज भी नहीं आ रही सर इसे ट्राई कर रहा हूँ सर हाँ और सर को तो केम सिंह सर इज एन लिस्ट ऑफ अटेंडीज प्लीज पुल इन टू पैनलिस्ट हर्षित हर्षित केम सिंह सर को पैनलिस्ट में लाइए सर आपका इंतजार कर रहे हैं सर जी सर जी सर जी सर नॉट येट ऑडिबल पीपी श्रीवास्तव सर यू आर ऑडिबल बट यू वीडियो इज नॉट अवेलेबल वी के नॉट सी यू एंड केम सिंह सर वेलकम सर गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून नमस्कार जी सर आपका श्रीवास्तव सर आपका वीडियो नहीं दिख रहा है मैं क्या करूं <laughs> आप तो सब दिख रहे हैं मुझे जी हर्षित आप देखिए क्या इशू है भी नहीं आ रहा वीडियो का का चैट आ रहा है आई थिंक मोबाइल से जो किया तब तो नहीं हो रहा एक मिनट सर श्रीवास्तव सर आपने मोबाइल से ज्वाइन किया है क्या जी सर एक आपने मोबाइल से किया सर हाँ अभी दिख रहा है अब दिख रहा है सर जी 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 सर अब दिख रहा है सर बिल्कुल बस केम सिंह सर नहीं आई एम ऑन द लाइन बट आई कैन सी एवरीबॉडी एक्सेप्टिंग माय वीडियो 
सर एक बार आप या तो बंद करके दोबारा से आ जाइए सर सर जी हाँ सर ये सर आ गए सर जी सर कर रहा हूँ मैं जी आप दिख रहे हैं सर दिख रहे हैं सर गुड टू सी यू सर केम सिंह सर गुड आफ्टरनून एंड वेलकम सर इसमें फातिमा है हाँ अभी सब हो गए सर आज बहुत एडी सर दिस इज दिस इज ए ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी यू हैव गिवन एंड रियली रियली एक साथ सारे साल वर्ड्स मतलब बिकम ए मेमोरेबल पिक्चर इन फैक्ट सारे पितामह जो है बीस जी सारे बीस सारे बीस डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट के यहाँ पे हैं तो जी सर आ फातिमा फातिमा जी ऑल सेट जी सभी सभी पैनलिस्ट और सभी एक्सपर्ट हमारे पास आ चुके हैं तो आप एडी सर शुरू करते हैं हाँ ऑल द बेस्ट फातिमा एंड हर्षित जी और बिल्कुल थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर सो गुड आफ्टरनून प्रोफेशनल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज इंस्टीट्यूटेड एन एनुअल अवार्ड नोन एज सुभाष चंद्र बोस आपदा प्रबंधन पुरस्कार on 23rd january the birth of anniversary of uh, netaji subhash chandra bose for the year 2021 dr rajendra kumar vandar has been witness awarded the prestigious subhash chandra bose after parvan puraskar for his excellent work in disaster management and also it may be recalled that for the year 2020 three km singh were selected for this award today uh honor to have both of them with us for this deliberation i'd like to extend a special welcome to our expert of the day dr r k bandari sir thank you for taking out your precious time to guide and encourage us in this endeavor uh dr rajinder kumar bandari sir has been one of the pioneers in india who laid the foundation for scientific studies on common land uh, hazards and landslides in particular dr bandari sir is uh, currently the chairman of the forum for disaster mitigation indian national academy of engineering a uh, distinguished visiting professor at iit roorkee and a uh, chairman of the committee on disaster mitigation of the indian roads congress Uh, uh dr arke bandari's former appellation was as uh, he was a program director united nations habitat at iraq director central building research institute roorkee united nations advisor for un hs at anka chief international science and technology research csir uh, director center for disaster mitigation and management Anna University Chennai Chairman for the Center Mitigation and Management BIT University Last year he had completed his tenure 
as member of the research council for CSIR NIRI, CSIR CBRI, CSIR SERC, and CSIR CRRI, and a member of National Advisory Committee of the National Disaster Management Authority. Established India's first laboratory and three other centers on landslide and CSIR CBRI. He also conducted studies on disasters in India and his contribution include the first global example of a permanent solution to a large landslide by deep draining of mountain through directional drilling. The first accepted explanation of the landslides caused by the deposition and the first ever landslide, landslide hazard, Atlas of India by uh, BMTPC. He led the Indian National Academy of Engineering, INAE, forum to prepare actionable recommendation on landslide disaster mitigation. Now, coming towards the um, commentators of uh, for today's deliberation, I'll start with Sri K. Sir. Uh, K. M. Singh, sir, former DIG of CSF, was appointed as a founder member of the National Disaster Management Authority in 2005 in uh, recognition of his commendable work during the destructive 2004 tsunami. Uh, Kim Singh sir is also known to have played a leading role in establishing uh, one of its kind specialist response force, the National Disaster Response Force, right from scratch. The force currently boasts of 14,000 personnel, including 12 battalions. The NDRF has delivered a commendable response during its initial itself during the devastating Kosi floods 2018, 2008. Say, mm, mm, Sir has also played a major role in implementing the concept of community capacity building by NDRF as a force multiplier. As a result of this, the NDRF, NDRF has so far trained around 60 lakh people who were at the first responders among the community. Uh, about the second uh, commentator of the day, Professor Vinod uh, K. Sharma, sir. Sir is a senior professor, disaster management consultant at Indian Institute of Public Administration, Vice Chairman, Sikkim Disaster Management Authority, Government of Sikkim. He was member of UN ISDR, Asia Science and Technology Academic Advisory Group from 2015 to 2019. Member community for uh, framing national science, technology, and innovation policy 2020 of Government of India. Professor Sharma started his career from GV College, Muzaffar Nagar, and served in a number of universities in India, Middle East, and USA before joining the Indian Institute of Public Administration in 1992. He was instrumental in setting up a, a National Center for Disaster Management at, at IIPA, which is now National Institute of Disaster Management under Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India. He is a member of Executive Committee of Safir India. He is visiting professor at uh, Kyoto University, Japan, and many other universities and training come academic institutions in India and abroad. He has published more than 75 research papers and 15 books in area of environment and disaster management. He is a member of several important committees of NDMA and NIDM. Now coming to the third commentator of the um, program, it's um, uh, P.P. Srivastava, sir. Currently, P.P. Srivastava sir is a member advisory committee of National Disaster Management Authority, a member governing body Tibet House, New Delhi, and of the Asian Confluence, Confluence Shillong. Member board of trustees, Sri Aurobindo Institute of Indian Culture, Shillong, Meghalaya. Formerly, he was a member of Northeastern Council and, all, and also chaired Northeastern Regional Educational Council. Srivastava sir was born in 1935 and obtained first division masters in chemistry, securing the first position in the subject in Rajasthan University in 1954. He served as lecturer as Jaswan College in Jodhpur and then entered the IPS. His meeting with the chairman ISRO led to the close collaboration with ISRO and ISAC uh, and for the formation of flood early warning system, a first time uh, synergetic technique that has been instrumented in the substantial saving of lives year after year. A river early warning system following the heavy loss of life when a ferry vessel sank uh, while crossing the Brahmaputra on uh, 34-12 and setting up of a unit 
Einstein Nisak for free disaster reduction funding. He has been nominated by the Government of India to advisory committee of the National Disaster Management Authority. Earlier, around 1969, he has played a key role in setting up of residential RKM school in An Narutram Nagar in Tirap district in Arunachal Pradesh. Later, an excellent girls school was also opened by Ramakrishna Sarada Mission in Kansa. Later, at the ins insistence of the local people, another girls high school was opened at Dihang. As Chief Secretary Goa, he helped in successful transition of UP of Goa, Daman and Diu, and full fledged statehood of Goa, consolidating the state missionary thereafter and playing key role in the amicable settlement of privileged Konkan Marathi language dispute. Uh, rural and urban development and urban service services has always been areas of uh, special interest and relevance to him in posting in the ununified single municipal, municipal corporation of Delhi. Improving the quality of education and fusion of human values in education in Delhi has always been area of special interest to him. He gives special attention to improving functioning and administration of municipal hospitals, colony dispensaries, and public health delivery system in um, uh, system in Delhi. Now coming towards our host, there are hosts for today's uh, webinar. I'll uh, just talk about uh, um, Major General Manoj Kumar Binder, sir. Uh, Doctor Manoj, Major General Manoj Kumar Binder, sir, is an alumnus of the Defence. Academy Major General Manoj Kumar Binder sir is a grad graduate of Defence Service Staff College and has attended the prestigious Higher Command course at Army War College. Besides excelling in all other careers courses in the Army, during his more than three decades of service, he has held important command and staff assignments. He was General Officer commanding of sensitive suburb areas in the northeast he has also been posted as deputy director general in director of army air defense major general manoj kumar binder sir has served as the provost marshal in the united nations mission in mozambique where he was deeply involved in the liquidation of the mission he has been director center for united nations peacekeeping new delhi for three years and he was also the secretary of international association of peacekeeping training center Lastly, I'll uh, just give an uh, introduction of our uh, convener of the program, Professor Anil Kumar Gupta, sir. Um, uh, Professor Anil Kumar Gupta is a sustainability risk management strategist who working in the area of disaster management, environment, and climate resilience for more than 25 years with national, subnational, and business administration. He is currently head of environment, climate, and disaster risk management division of NIDM. He is currently implementing a number of projects, including a KPRES with Department of Science and Technology and a National Knowledge Mission on Climate Change, National Agriculture Disaster Management Plan with Ministry of Agriculture and Farm, Farmers Welfare, Health Resilience and Capacity Building, National Health Adaptation Plan with WHO and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Crisis Management Plan to deal with contamination of water bodies and disaster management plan of ministry with Central Pollution Control Board and the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Uh, now I'd like to first invite Professor Anil Kumar Gupta, Gupta sir. Sir, please uh, give the welcome address and uh, background of uh, this webinar. Thank you, uh, Fatima. Uh, you have uh, given uh, the uh, introduction of our uh, expert guest today and uh, on behalf of National Institute of Disaster Management and in fact on behalf of the entire disaster management fraternity uh, because because uh, uh, today we have the luminaries which have uh, gave us an opportunity to feel an honor and uh, uh, two of the experts are uh, uh, the uh, with uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose awardee and that is a great privilege for us so thank you all all the experts uh, for accepting our invitation today, uh, uh, Professor Bandari Saab, uh, KM Singh Saab, uh, PP Shwasta Saab, and uh, Professor Vinod Sharma Saab, you all are like our teachers, and we have always been uh, learning from you, and uh, your work has always been a kind of a guiding light for all of us. Uh, 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 on behalf of the National Institute of Disaster Management, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, for for giving a formal uh, welcome to our dignitaries and uh, to pro, uh, to give a keynote address, I would request uh, my head of the institution, 
uh, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, our Executive Director, to to uh, to uh, give his uh, address. Major General Bindal, please. Thank you, uh, Professor Anil Gupta. Uh, first of all, a very hearty welcome to all the panelists uh, who have come here today, and a special welcome to uh, Dr. Bhandari sir, uh, who has been awarded the Subhash Chandra Bose Abda Prabhandan Puraskar for the year 2020. We are also very uh, fortunate that uh, the 2019 awardee, Mr. K.M. Singh sir, uh, uh, is also here. And hopefully, uh, the two other panelists, Professor V.K. Sharma and Dr. P.P. Shivasta, will be next in line for the next <laughs> two years. And then we can boast of holding this particular event today, wherein when we had two existing and two prospective awardees of the same uh, prestigious award. Uh, uh, it will be really, uh, and we are looking forward to that particular scenario. Uh, so I welcome everyone and today's uh, webinar is about risk to resilience. It covers the whole canvas and for me to give a keynote address at what Professor Gupta is saying will be very wrong in front of the four luminaries who are here. Uh, I dare not uh, say anything, but uh, I can only welcome them and I'm keen to listen for next two to two, three hours to whatever they have to say and learn and imbibe their teachings uh, hereafter. Thank you so much and over back to you, Professor Anil Gupta. Thank you, sir. And uh, uh, with with the permission of, uh, uh, with, uh, I would seek the permission of the experts and uh, the expert uh, key uh, expert of the day, Professor Bandari Saab, uh, uh, to to start uh, interviewing him. Uh, though though uh, as Edi Saab told, this is also another kind of dare, but uh, I have stepped in, so I have to I have to perform. Uh, that uh, I am I am taking uh, an opportunity to interview uh, the own teacher. So, uh, am I permitted, sir? Should I start, uh, sir? Sir, you are muted. Yes, uh, please. Go Thank ahead. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, as uh, the disaster management journey, uh, we have a number of protocols. Uh, two major protocols the Hyogo framework of uh, disaster risk reduction. And now we are in the central framework for DRR. So almost the journey of uh, uh, the, the more than more than three decades. And uh, the, what we learned that uh, the, the disaster management is growing as, an, as, as a subject of research and practice uh, at the same time. And uh, when, when, we, uh, when we talk of uh, the, the kind of a perfect blend in this, uh, we look at experts like you and uh, Professor Bandari, you being a kind of a synonym of this, this real blend uh, of, of the professional contribution to disaster management and also uh, uh, being an, an excellent uh, uh, academician. Uh, so, uh, so uh, and uh, if we look at the kind of your journey from where you started, so if we look at your CV, we find that you are a civil engineer, then you specialize in geotechnical engineer. And there were a lot of areas for you to contribute to, to various aspects of development. Actually, what made you uh, think about disaster management and to choose to work in the area of disaster management? So this is the, this is the first question uh, to, to you, Dr. Bandari. Uh, thank you. Before I answer this question, let me take this opportunity to thank General Bindal and yourself for giving me the privilege and honor to share this platform with my distinguished colleagues, uh, Sri K.M. Singh, Professor Sharma, and Sri P.P.C. Vastava. Uh, in fact, they are my teachers as well. Uh, so it is a great honor for me that I am here today. As far as uh, your question as to what interested me to this subject, let me at the outset say that uh, disaster mitigation and management is a subject where every citizen of this planet should be not me alone, uh, you know, uh, th this is something of a total safety of the planet and it touches everybody. So this is one thing, regardless of the field of expertise, we have to take interest and then we can contribute to the subject according to our own chosen field of speciality. So this is one thing. Secondly, let me at the outset take this message across very loud and clear that we have inherited this planet from our forefathers, 
and but more from children. Many people think that we have our inheritance and uh, we go like that. But let us, uh, the time has come for us to remember that we have not inherited this planet, we have borrowed it from our children. Uh, unless we take interest in what our uh, borrowing is, you know, we will not be able to contribute. As far as I am concerned, Anil, uh, frankly speaking, I don't know uh, where the interest began, but I, it, I didn't try. It just happened. And uh, it was love at first sight. And love turned into romance eventually as, as I started working. And in that one, Providence helped me in more than one day. I was put to a college where civil engineering was the strongest subject. I, and I, that turned me a civil engineer. I joined an institution where geotechnical engineering was very strong. I became a geotechnical engineer. But eventually, I ended up uh, in the company of uh, uh, professional clients uh, during the field of my uh, uh, research. And that turned me uh, to the subject of disaster mitigation. To the Imperial College of Science and Technology, London, where I pursued my studies, there was at one place, this as though the center of gravity of disaster mitigation initiative has moved to Imperial College. We had stalwarts like A.W. Skempton, A.W. Bishop, uh, Norbert Morton, John Hutchinson, and uh, you can, list is very long. So when Providence put me in their company, um, naturally my interest grew uh, very rapidly. Upon return from here, I was equally fortunate. Um, I a long answer to this. I'll make it as short as I can. Uh, I was uh, uh, put in the company of um, Indian National Academy of Engineering Fellowship. Dr. Anil Kakorka, Dr. Baldev Raj, uh, Dr. Suresh, uh, Dr. Sant Mishra, Dr. Goel, and the president, pre present president, Dr. Indranil Mana. I have received abundance of support from them. And you yourself mentioned about the lead initiatives INE has taken. Yeah. So this is uh, one occasion where I'll acknowledge that what I have contributed would not have been possible, but for uh, enormous support that I received from Indian National Academy of Engineering. Secondly, the NDMA and NIDM. In fact, I had very long association. Uh, NDMA, when it was uh, born, uh, General Witch, and um, they were, gave me a great support. Uh, he still supports uh, me and is my guide and mentor. Uh, even before that, the High Powered Committee on Disasters, uh, led by J.C. Pansa, I'm still in touch with him, and I think he's the one who gave me the opportunity to do two big things, which I must uh, underscore here. One is to let me um, express my dream of disaster-free India. That is uh, the High Powered Committee report, which was submitted to the government of India in 2001 carries this uh, photo or this dream as the, the vision of India. And I am grateful to NIDM that they adopted this vision. I am grateful to the Vice Chancellor of Anna University that let me have that vision when the center was established at Anna University. The same message I carried to uh, the VIT University uh, where the Chancellor gave me the opportunity to established the Center for Disaster Mitigation and Management. Defense Ministry gave me uh, opportunity to talk about disaster, destination disaster-free India in a specially uh, organized session. Institution of Engineers had a huge meeting in the IIT on this. Therefore, I would say that the message of disaster-free uh, India, which I had the opportunity to spread, would not have been possible. But for the enormous support that I received, then Dr. Kakodka, uh, who was uh, then the president of the uh, uh, academy, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Director General CSIR, before that Dr. A.P. Mitra, and uh, uh, T. Ramaswamy, who was secretary of the state. All of them provided me a known opportunity. So it will be very wrong to see my contribution in isolation, unless you put that all together. And uh, I would not mention about the colleagues in the United Nations where I had the opportunity with the peak of war in Iraq when Canal Hotel was bombed. And so all these together uh, 
send uh, Srivastav Saab's message to me every time that how many lives we can save from disasters. Actually, that kept the fire burning in me. So this is the short answer, uh, <laughs> shortest I can make. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dr. Bandari Saab, and uh, uh, you you very uh, very very uh, meticulously uh, explained uh, and also. Uh, like you said that love at uh, the first sight and 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 i uh, we all will wish that romance keeps on uh, and uh, it, it, it's it's it must go on uh, for for long long time and wish you all uh, a long and healthy life and so that we 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 uh, get all your contributions uh, i recall i recall while i worked at neeri uh, with the late professor kanna and that was the first time I, I, I came to know about uh, your initiatives in disaster management. It was 1994 or something. Uh, and I, here I would also say that uh, the supports come uh, from, from the Almighty. Uh, whenever uh, someone, someone is strives for, uh, for uh, some good work for saving uh, the humanity and uh, life. So, so uh, that was something that uh, made people to support uh, your NDVS. And uh, taking taking a, a lead from uh, the, the points that you have uh, uh, referred here, uh, while you explained about your initial work, uh, we also agree. And in fact, that has been recognized by the the Prime Minister's Agenda 10 on disaster risk management. That each and every disaster uh, gives a lot of lessons. In fact, nature is the na nature is a great teacher, and and. Uh, uh, and if we look at the kind of lessons which are uh, which are uh, uh, given by disasters that serve as a crucial resources for us uh, to to plan a better future, uh, what are what are your uh, uh, views on this? That uh, uh, the key key lessons uh, that we that we can learn from the recent past disasters, I would say that over past ten years or over past uh, fifteen years. Uh, major disasters so what are the key lessons from from uh, your perspective my uh, first uh, lesson uh, uh, is that we should refrain from doing human violence against nature nature be commanded must be obeyed this is a cardinal principle it has to go deep into our minds that nature be commanded must be obeyed and the defiance of nature will retaliate in the form of crisis that we face. Uh, again, uh, we have a uh, different approach to management of disaster. We try to counter nature and yet want to do it by brute force of technology. But that is not so. Uh, the defenses of disasters are to be built in the minds of men. It, it is that kind of uh, experience that we should have by our education system, by your capacity building, by training, whatever you want to do, you have to build these defenses in the minds of men. Then the external uh, activities that you perform to prevent this disaster, that disaster from happening, that need would not uh, be. So I think my first uh, lesson that I've learned is to practice nonviolence, uh, not in uh, words, speech, and action, on the personal level but also with the nature and environment. The second lesson that I've learned is that try to do difficult things when they are easy. You know, uh, nip the problem in the bud. We have seen, in fact, I have seen uh, over the period of decades uh, that the problems were very small at one time. And they, we let them grow big and big and big, and they became intractable. So, why not? As a country, we know our country very well. Every square inch of country we know. We know the problems we face. They have been documented, studied, and all that. Why is it then not that we don't address the issue of uh, controlling the problems when they are manageable? So this is one thing. The third takeaway, if I may say, is that dig your well when you are, you are, um, when you are thrusty, you know, so before you are thrusty. What happens that we have inherited a huge amount of infrastructure, the roads, highways, bridges, dams, uh, you have seen the recent disaster and so on. And uh, we look at those only when the problems hit us on the head. 
Now, uh, my uh, big lesson that I have learned in my life is that why as a civil engineer I should allow the same bridge to be destroyed twice, thrice and four times at the same location? Same roads are getting destroyed and we are rebuilding them without asking a question as to why that happened. So the, the lesson there is that when you have seen the problem, when it exists with infrastructure, railways and highways and so on, don't ask for the invitation uh, or give invitation to disaster to alert us that this is to be done. You have to do it uh, well on time. And uh, that is where uh, the um, clearances uh, for the projects are held up often because our investigations are not complete. We, uh, we have not understood the problem before we started solving those problems. So here again, Anil, I think uh, it's important that we look at all aspects of this and the difficulty here lies is not in new ideas. They are plenty of full, but in shedding the old ideas, we are not able to keep pace times. We have not benefited enough from the power of uh, and so on. And uh, therefore, that is something uh, that I can go on on the lessons that you have asked about takeaways also. So let me switch on to takeaways. Uh, now, one thing we have to understand is the disasters are no longer natural. You see, every time we blame nature and try to get away shunning our accountability, the fact remains that they are no longer natural. Uh, the urbanization that has taken place, non-engineering construction, uh, and etc., um, um, etc., et they are uh, quite a bit to blame. And yet, uh, we look at escape goes to climate change and extreme weather event or a rainfall event that had taken place two days back. All these are problems for a geological type in the mountain regions with causing, caused by chain of factors. Okay. And therefore, not recognizing that and blaming something that has happened at the last moment as a trigger is a thing. So the lesson, uh, the big takeaway here is that never again make the same mistakes again. Try to go to the bottom of the truth, try to understand the problem, and then design remedial measures which should be then eco-friendly. Not that any technology uh, that uh, permits some solution to be adopted because it's cheaper and because it's faster, you know. So the speed considerations take over. So that is where uh, the other takeaway is that we are very good solo players, but very bad orchestra player, you know. I mean, the teamwork, many of the good things that we have done individually, they don't uh, really help uh, the country. And I feel very sad about it. Many things I had said before, I keep repeating them, the opportunity, the people like you give me. And uh, then I look at my time and see that well, I think I was not successful enough in selling my, marketing my ideas. You see, you see that is where we have to be orchestra player. Many times we see that people give us ideas on silver platter. But we throw uh, baby with bath water. You know, we are we are very busy in our own things and we are not able to uh, do so. That is there. Another uh, takeaway is that we have uh, reduced our humility to accept the concede the mistakes. Uh, if we have made a mistake, we try, try to justify without any defense those. So if we can, the mid course corrections are possible. Honorable solutions. You know, sometimes uh, I. Young people, as they say, no, if I admit this, then uh, the whole blame will come on me, and so on and so forth. So I think we have to be very pragmatic, think about it, and give up the band-aid approach. Uh, we, we should not have band-aid approach. We should have the holistic approach, uh, repair the dysfunctional institutional mechanism, and then the major, major takeover away is that you uh, learn to live with nature, but not learn to live with the problems. You know, what we have done is that uh, we don't find permanent solutions to the problems. We have uh, started learning to live with the problems rather than learning to live with the uh, nature. So that is there. And uh, finally, I would say the, uh, the, the best advice that I can give is that uh, the days are over when um, we, at times, we have no solution to the problem. Now, anybody whosoever says that he has no solution to the problem, he's a liar or he has not understood it. So uh, use the science and technology, the power uh, uh, of uh, 
the wisdom, ancient wisdom, the uh, experience that over a period of time, and I am sure uh, with these takeaways, uh, we will be very happy. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank, thank you, Dr. Bandari, uh, for 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 your uh, uh, insights, and I. Uh, I, I hope we all uh, would agree with these kind of lessons because I recall the four papers that you had sent me by post. It was the year of 1998 uh, when when you are heading heading uh, HRDG at CSIR, and I had requested for your reprint. And I still uh, now you made me to recall reading those papers uh, because uh, it was almost 20 years back. You had given uh, uh, the, uh, these uh, these indications, and uh, we all would agree that each and every disaster gives us an early warning. Many times we tend to ignore these early warnings. And probably that is the reason the Sendai framework uh, has put as its priority one uh, as, as understanding disaster risk. And, and uh, as, as uh, the, 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 uh, all of us usually say that if we really want to understand disaster risk, we have to, we have to, that's a kind of a combination of understanding, anticipating, predicting and also characterizing in in in, in uh, the kind of a, a in advance uh, about the disaster scenarios uh, but that requires uh, the adequate capacities so where you find uh, in terms of the capacities to to predict and anticipate and understand these disasters uh, in india and if we really want to address uh, if there is a, some gap uh, if there is some gap so how to address that uh, looking at uh, looking at our own country well, uh, th th this is a very, uh, a very, very critical question that you actually, uh, uh, if we uh, do not know which direction we are going, no port is, uh, no wind is favorable to us. Uh, I always believe that the clarity must begin with understanding the problem. Uh, understanding the problem is half the solution, but we spend very little time in understanding the problem and our solutions begin the moment we are confronted with it. So understanding the disasters, the main thing which I have been saying, I, I think this, this is on record number of times the papers you mentioned, is that the clarity with which we can understand hazard, vulnerability and risk uh, uh, is, is the key to it. You, you have risk through risk resilience. So if you don't understand that, the Sendai framework, uh, how do you begin even with the uh, managing Sendai framework and 2030 will come? Uh, so, how do we have then the credible assessment of hazard, vulnerability and risk? Yes, we can have it provided we have the hazard maps which are credible, which are large scale. So, one of the points that INE recommendation had basically said is that countries should give extra focus on production of large scale uh, credible, user-friendly hazard maps, because they are going to be the basis on which we understand the problem. The second is the clear message, the global message now, and, uh, India is uh, no exception to this. Uh, this given time and again by the um, general assembly resolutions, uh, I don't want to get into it, uh, our own uh, policies and so on, is that we we'll have to invest in multi-hazard uh, risk resilience. So those days are gone when you say that my structure is, is earthquake, cyclones and floods. We owe it to the people to ensure that any structure that we put in place is sustainable from the point of view all kinds of disasters, multiple disasters. So um, understanding disasters is no longer going to be possible unless we have large scale user friendly field validated uh, hazard maps. Give this the topmost priority. That is uh, one thing. Then secondly, that unfortunately, despite the fact that uh, our uh, experts have been alerted from time and again, uh, we tend to ignore factors like uh, urbanization, like construction, like uh, climate change, extreme weather events, etc. in hazard mapping procedures. So all the atlases, etc., including the one you attributed to me, uh, those done in the past, uh, we have very often ignored this reality, which is being ignored even today by our people who invest a lot in research. So we must underscore, henceforth, the country cannot afford 
projection of any hazard maps which are divorced from the reality of the ground reality that there there would be um, construction issues uh, already taken place there is a past history of disaster and in an area we tend to forget it is a multiple scars in its history uh, have taken place time and again and it is therefore very unfortunate that if we, these don't figure into our understanding of this then how can our understanding be correct and all that then secondly the anticipating the disasters you mentioned that is we have to do it ahead of time now many investments have been done i remember that a lot of investment in projecting disaster scenarios you know we have these great earthquakes starting from 1897 shillong and 1905 kandla and so on and we also had this mandi earthquake 8 plus magnitude ndma did the forecasting and projection now when we project anticipated these disasters i think there has to be very credible analysis of these and that will not be possible if we don't have even the credible maps of the area and all that so this is another thing that anticipating the disasters uh, i as an engineer would like to take a one humble suggestion here uh, for uh, um, uh, take away nationally uh, is that we will always be short on facts we will always be uncertain about the data uncertainties is a part of our life but then uh, we should now uh, switch on to observational method of design and construction where you observe uh, as you build and modulate your design as you proceed now this observation is through powerful technologies satellite imagery through remote sensing methods through ground instrument whatever you like um, uh, ocular observations you keep observing and modulating the design that will satisfy your requirement for not losing any time in uh, rituals and uh, uh, even necessary essentials uh, you can proceed with that unfortunately this is not Uh, catching up because we are still with the old procedures of working the other thing is that um, of course for practices they are meant for routine jobs you know uh, bureau of standards might have the other professional bodies they have taken out the course of practice some of them are 10 years old and not been validated so by law uh, uh, there should be an empowerment of the expert teams to deviate from these you, you see even expert teams shy away from using what they know as the latest in understanding just because the code doesn't allow this kind to happen our dprs and other things are flawed really so i think one should look into these very vital aspects which are uh, uh, cause of serious concern they are self defeating you know i mean we ourselves do something suicidal knowingly just because we have to follow certain rules and regulations and things like that and we also uh, i uh, blame my professional colleague that they are not able to highlight this problem uh, adequately to, to to the decision makers uh, to arrive at some very amicable solution to this fact where we can um, uh, um, change our contractual procedures we can uh, enlighten people process. and also uh, finally i would say that uh, you mentioned about uh, predicting and this uh, a couple of lines on this that uh, i think sometimes i feel astrologers can do better prediction than uh, scientists because you see what happens that those pseudo scientists they don't even um, get hold of the uh, vital factors uh, that must go into forecasting and not go through analysis but by hindsight or by subjective opinions they try to make the forecast one of the simple thing i will tell you is that whenever a landslide 90% of the people by saying so much of uh, cloud burst was there no they absolve 99 other uh, vital factors which are contributing to that kind of yeah. so such uh, forecasts etc are to be taken by a grain of salt and uh, to the final sentence to um, give comfort to everybody that we are at a stage in science and technology where very reliable forecasts uh, and predictions of all phenomena yeah necessary i mean of course uh, earthquakes and a few disasters we are uh, somewhat away in um, uh, getting to grip with it but you see the improvements of cyclone prediction um, weather forecasts and all that we have substantially improved so uh, this is i think the most important uh, question that uh, you have asked me 
because it has everything hinges on how well we understand the problem. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Bandari Saab. And uh, I, uh, very, very important that uh, uh, that just uh, two days before Government of India has uh, announced its new uh, geospatial data policy. And in fact, uh, uh, that very much relates to, to the kind of scope that you presented. And uh, in fact, the, the kind of agenda that you have given to, to the disaster management fraternity, uh, because uh, uh, we have the technology, we have the procedural uh, approaches available with us, but uh, the, the, the real agenda, real issue is that how prudently and how uh, proactively we, we, uh, we uh, use that. Uh, and now the another question uh, I, I would like to uh, come okay, before to you, you before you go to that yeah. can I uh, add to this because this yeah. what you have said is a landmark decision yes the government of India and I think uh, we all need to be very happy uh, yes because uh, this is something which uh, has opened floodgate of possibilities people like me who have been waiting for it for uh, many many decades. Uh, we see this a uh, reality. In fact, uh, if you were uh, day before yesterday or 48 hours before, I would say that this might not happen in my lifetime. Uh, th that was the kind of pessimism with this, and it's a great thing that the government has come up with new special data maps and guidelines and for the services, etc. Now, I will tell you that this is a shot in the arm. All that we are discussed in terms of um, uh, risk resilience requirements, like hazard mapping, etc which are uh, today not possible or even when disasters take place their meaningful uh, uh, analysis is not possible i think the access to the maps uh, and information is going to do a great deal uh, in, and i, I think the, the many of the um, good things that i found there was a single point clearances and things like that first of all those things which are already in public domain don't need clearance uh, a uh, single point, people will be able to uh, get the clearances, the good resolution um, maps. They, they will speed up our um, uh, of the projects. Uh, they will. I think the speed of construction will go up because you will understand uh, difficulties before they arise. Uh, so I, I can go on on this, but uh, since uh, this is not the formal question you asked, I would say that um, let's, um, be very proud of this decision. This is one of the landmark decisions, I would say, in my view, that the government has taken. Yeah, I, 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 I would uh, agree with you. And uh, in fact, uh, it will be a great support to, to our researchers also, because uh, uh, they will be able to come up with innovative ideas. And then, as uh, again, I will come to, to, to uh, the Prime Minister's Agenda 10 on disaster management, which calls for uh, the risk mapping that each and every each and every nook and corner of the country uh, uh, the risk mapping is the fundamental thing because uh, in order to safeguard the humanity safeguard our habitat that is the fundamental thing uh, but the next question uh, Daksab, is uh, related to uh, this issue uh, that uh, if we look at the, the kind of a uh, past two three decades of, uh, of the experience of facing major disasters what we notice that uh, whenever a new disaster comes, that that is bringing new dimensions and and new complexities, oh, uh, as compared to the previous ones. Uh, like, like like if we if we uh, we try to to reduce the loss of life in in the cyc uh, super cyclone ninety nine, uh, then cyclone Filin, we we say that we have been able to uh, to prevent the loss of life. Now the next cyclones are bringing uh, the, uh, the more severe damages to to the infrastructure. So always there are new dimensions which are emerging uh, with, with the new uh, new disasters. So so uh, how we uh, how our uh, how our uh, understanding of disasters uh, has to be more flexible or adaptive to these kind of issues in India. You know, uh, Anil. Uh... One of the uh, things you must appreciate is that uh, uh, every disaster, as I said, has thrown lessons. We have, uh, um, at least we know broadly what these lessons are. And uh, my advocacy was that uh, we must go uh, dive deep into those and ensure that we plow back the experience into uh, forward planning. So this is what I said. Now, um, the... Um, 
birth of NDMA, uh, that is, uh, I say the act uh, 2005 or the policy right. or what yeah. has been done in the as well planning commission or what uh, the disaster management uh, mitigation fund has done in the 15th finance commission or uh, so on, or maybe even the disaster management plan, etc. They have all benefited from this experience, even the high powered committee's report and all that kind of thing. And uh, I must, uh, before I uh, really um, tell you about uh, something which uh, are uh, of concern, I would also like to remind uh, everyone here that collectively, if you look at the initiatives that have been taken, the milestones, the kind of things, they are very impressive. And um, uh, we have every reason to be happy uh, that is now when the Sendai framework, we are the signatories uh, of that. And uh, if I, I actually looked at the uh, problems uh, in um, uh, in the context of the uh, solutions that we have to find, I uh, was amazed that even, let's say, for example, the kind of connectivity India has, and uh, we are not making use of it. Tsunami warnings. Now, you know, before uh, India got in Italy, Australia, Colombia, and Japan. They, they were doing it. Now, we are part of it. And uh, today, if uh, there is a threat of tsunami, I'm sure that uh, every Indian would find a relief in that kind of a thing. Now, there's an international charter of space, uh, of you know, and there India is represented in UK, China, France, Brazil, Japan, every uh, country is there. So what I would say is that um, it that need is strengthening now. They are, one is that putting the knowledge to effective use. Actually, that is one thing which I find that we have done so many things. At times, we in, uh, discover inferior will, you know, rediscover inferior will. So, one thing is that um, uh, um, institute like NIDM should do a webinar exclusively on what are those low-hanging fruits, um, which um, can be uh, with a modicum of initiative, which can be used that would be the disaster knowledge network idea, you know, because it has born and died yeah. several times. I raised this in a high powered committee. It was taken by NIDM and so many things were done, but still we are still on it. And since knowledge is uh, power, that let's do something. Secondly, let us uh, introduce some kind of accountability uh, in our system, because I think the fragmented approach uh, of coordination and all this um, uh, is not really helping us much because uh, we don't try to know actually as to where the problem really went wrong. And we have to also techno legal regimes uh, and have a zero tolerance. We have been saying that, but we are not practicing it. And of course, the uh, one of my very bad subject is that uh, once we uh, have the scientific uh, followed in all these uh, investigation and analysis, I'm sure that everything will be credible. In yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we, we, we agree with, the, uh, with uh, the, uh, the, uh, these points. And uh, uh, I, I think with the, the, these new initiatives of Government of India, uh, uh, our, our initiatives in this direction would be uh, would be uh, would get a better pace and uh, your uh, suggestions for an idea uh, to take up the initiatives on promoting disaster knowledge uh, network and uh, these kind of initiatives are well taken and uh, we'll certainly uh, work on those uh, lines uh, as uh, uh, I recall that all the experts, uh, you, Dr. Bandari Saab, uh, P.P. Shrivastava Saab, Vinod uh, Sharma Saab, uh, K.M. Singh Saab, all have been advocating very, very strongly that disaster risk management has to be uh, integrated into the developmental planning process. Uh, because we see that it is kind of one of the central, uh, central uh, strategy. Uh, with, with the long experience in disaster management and promoting disaster research uh, and professionalism, uh, uh, I, I would request that uh, maybe maybe three three strong uh, uh, points that uh, that emerge uh, from from your experience uh, for mainstreaming disaster risk management. Uh, okay, I, I think this is a topic on which uh, you should have a separate webinar. 
but I, I will uh, make a sincere attempt to uh, zero down to three, you know, because there are uh, maybe at least a dozen recommendations. But uh, let, the first is that uh, which I see is very glaringly uh, absent of our system, and we must immediately embrace this, is the shift of focus to resilience. That is absolutely a must. There should not be any uh, sort of, because still we are investing in different parts of the country, looking at the individual hazards, where we safety is not guaranteed. Now, I remind you, Anil, that in Johannesburg Agreement in 2002, we talked about multi-hazard, all-inclusive systems. Again, in um, Hugo framework, you find to, uh, that was up to 2015, isn't it? 2005 to 2015, yeah. we, we talked about integrated multi-hazard system. Now, uh, again, in um, Sendai framework, we are talking about uh, availability and access to multi-hazard systems and disaster assessment. So, when we have been talking about it from 2002, why have we not been able to create a single pace setting example where a great value to, and uh, inspire others to do it? It has remained confined to speeches and uh, um, uh, lecture training programs. It must go into this. So it's a first recommendation, and for which, uh, if I can use this opportunity, I would recommend that decade 2021 to 2030 or so, maybe declare the de decade of multi-hazard risk resilience. Uh, so today we are re reminded at least those uh, thousands of our fellow professionals who are still talking about hazards, uh, it will be an alarm bell to them uh, that is there. Second uh, big uh, thing that I would say the application of uh, disaster mitigation with development planning will be possible only when we walk the talk. You know, what is happening is that our, uh, you, you look at uh, our uh, reports, uh, DPRs, etc. Uh, they say something. Uh, I, I don't go to the merits and the quality of those reports, but whatever they are, but when we implement them, we find that uh, 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 quite the same on the ground. Uh, here I cite the example which India does India proud. There are a number of projects uh, which have been done, class projects when you talk about the highest railway bridge, the Chenna Bridge, or uh, you Chennai Longest Road Tunnel, or tunnel um, inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister, um, which is the longest tunnel and uh, which has reduced the between Leh and Manali by 46 kilometers. So these are yeah. very, very uh, big projects which does us proud. But can anybody tell me as to how we have benefited from this in the classroom, in the uh, training progress, in the curricular development? You see, uh, I mean, we have learned a great deal in this. So there are two questions that must be answered. First, put the hand on the heart and say very clearly, we have really been able to integrate disaster mitigation in planning, which we have been advocating. If not, we should alert the government, the people, well in time that something more remains to be done. For, for example, Atal Tunnel, um, I understand that there are some very serious seepage problems there. Now, the question is that we can maybe enforce but uh, anything which is not proper, uh, I mean, investigate in very uh, detail may also be unforeseen. So I don't cast a judgment on it. But what I can say is that the lessons that we learn from these uh, things should, should be uh, very big strength in uh, having this. So I would make a recommendation that if we had say that disaster mitigation should be integrated with development planning, we must ensure and learn from these projects we have just concluded or are doing. And from two angles, one is that what is the learning experience of this? And secondly, they should not cause any kind of disaster or concern in future. So what steps can we take today? I mean, those project authorities owe it to the country to tell what steps we should take today so that tomorrow uh, we do not have to face any problem. And then uh, third thing, because you're limited to three, uh, you choose to cite the community uh, participation. You know, we have to invest a lot in the uh, local uh, response, community participation, family level, uh, uh, at uh, individual level, yeah. levels uh, at the lower end of the, of 
because they are the ones who are most concerned about their lives. They are the ones who are the first uh, recipients for that. Yeah. And um, there again, the special focus, I would say, is on the women and children. Um, and um, that also brings to their education, their uh, capacity building, training, etc., etc. So I think it, will, uh, it might look uh, far, uh, far off connection from integrating development planning. You might be expecting other solutions from me, but let me tell you that my heart goes to uh, involvement of communities. They must understand what implications these, uh, um, uh, what kind of hazards they might still face after completion. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, in fact, uh, the, the two, two quick reflections from my side. One is that uh, you, uh, you, you are correct in, uh, in this that uh, uh, we have not done uh, adequate and uh, mainstreaming DRR into developmental planning. We have to do a lot. Uh, uh, there have been some pilot, good pilot projects are good success stories, but uh, mainstreaming requires that uh, each and every district, each and every state, uh, each and every uh, 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 town or uh, city uh, should should mainstream this into its planning process. That is very important. And the last point that you referred to about the community involvement. I recall when I visited Sikkim, uh, I saw, saw, saw uh, a report of in the initiatives like the family disaster management plan. That was the kind of first first time I, I listened about this. So, so there are initiatives, but until unless it goes into the bloodstream of the, this, the, the, the entire country. So that is important. Only isolated isolated examples would not uh, actually bring down the, 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 uh, the kind of a risk uh, that, that we actually envisage. Now, uh, now coming to, coming to a, a, a subject very close to your heart. And that is about the hill ecosystem, hill environment or mountain environment and the subject of landslide. Uh, because uh, uh, the first time when I came to know about you was uh, was your work in landslide. I was visiting uh, the uh, the Uttarakhand regarding a project, and then I I read some of your uh, literature. Uh, and uh, that is very important the issue uh, in 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 the Indian Himalayan, uh, particularly in the Himalayan uh, ecosystems, uh, for uh, relating to protection of life, uh, livelihood, resources, infrastructure and the ecosystem resources so so uh, i would request you again for two or three points which you find that most most critical uh, that that uh, is kind of a lesson for all of us uh, anil uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to remind everybody far back in 2015 uh, indian national academy of engineering well uh, bent well beyond my personal expertise to mobilize uh, consultative process uh, the rest of the country. Uh, and uh, Sivas sir, might say something on that later, but uh, I am aware of the fact that we left no experts uh, unconsulted. And I myself coordinated that project, which went on for two years of intensive consultation. And we came out with the unanimous set of recommendations um, what, what ought to be done, what uh, is the system, what can make a transformational change. I'm uh, very happy that uh, NDMA, uh, where the recommendations were presented, uh, I got full support from NIDM. I did some presentations. Uh, Current Science uh, brought editorial and uh, presented all these kind of things. So uh, my short answer to this is uh, that if we can uh, revisit those, because after all, I mean, we are not static in time. Uh, 2015, uh, some of these recommendations have been implemented, I'm, I believe. The center for exclusive empowered center for disaster landslide risk mitigation that has come in the Ministry of Mines and all that. But uh, it's a case and time enough. Uh, I request uh, the ED and IAM to consider whether we can revisit INA recommendation 2015. And if there is, uh, we welcome it. I'm sure the academy will welcome it. And then see that which of those recommendations still remains to be unimplemented but since you have asked me two or three quick points out of that first let me tell you is that uh, our methods of um, um, producing dprs for landslide um, control yes, yes. environment impact assessments and emergency management plans if i want to be very blunt to drive home my point i normally don't like to be blunt but they they, they leave much to be desired they reflect 
the state of the art that we have far away from them and so we should have a critical look relook at that and that is where we should help government in uh, improving their policy framework and uh, secondly that we need highly trained multidisciplinary teams you know we have individual uh, experts now they don't make a team honestly and and uh, when we think about this we don't think of team india you know you say that you have assigned the job to this institute or that institute and that institute thinks that the country's expertise is uh, uh, concentrated in that institute only whereas the expectation the country has is the best of the expertise goes to build on that so uh, think about a strategy where you can have multidisciplinary teams uh, and they should not be formulated after the disaster has occurred there is no time for it so uh, go in for a uh, proactive approach where even before disaster takes place um, you know, the team is already there and they don't wait for approvals but they just go and investigate this i was a part of the united nations um, habitat team um, in iraq and when halibutan was looking after the reconstruction part of it and all that we even discussed the projects where the bridge is intact but might be destroyed by enemies and in that case it is to be resurrected so who is going to do it and all that and those approvals that were done beforehand so this is one thing which i would say that we have to really pitch our expectations high and create these multidisciplinary teams and ensure that they also get trained you know sometimes we feel yeah. that we have been training others and so we are the master trainers and we don't need any training this is a myth actually many of us has not um, uh, advanced knowledge for decades uh, we are uh, repeating the same thing there and how many of us are very alert to the state of the art so second uh, recommendation is create these highly specialized teams and third is that please please this this is uh, to be underscored number of times that any of the remedial measures that we take for control of fixing of the hot spots on landslides etc they must be drainage centric measures environmental friendly measures here they are confrontational not uh, we don't look at what nature is thinking of what we are doing we are blind to the uh, concept we can brutally fight nature by artificially constructing retaining walls and anchors and things like that so the current focus for using all kinds of uh, high handed sledge hammer approach uh, in um, mitigation should be uh, given way to nature friendly drainage friendly solutions and uh, believe me I, there is an example that are already uh, provided and i can provide more where a simple recommendation like this can make a visible impact at the national level so these are the three, i would say yeah very 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 important uh, uh, points you raise dr uh, mandari sir and the last point uh, that uh, uh, the advocacy for the nature based solutions are finding uh, solutions which are eco friendly so that will have uh, even the co benefits because uh, it it also provides Uh, uh, sustainability uh, to to the people also uh, to the ecosystems also so a kind of a landscape based approach so that is uh, very important uh, as uh, 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 this year india also uh, uh, india also announced its science technology and innovation policy so so this question uh, this uh, point uh, will come to you as you have uh, uh, headed uh, 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 the institution under CSIR. You are director of uh, the, the Central Building Research Institute, and uh, you were also uh, head of the uh, Center for Disaster Mitigation and Management at uh, Anna University and VIT University, and uh, several other uh, initiatives you led. And uh, you you uh, are a professor also. So looking at the entire gamut of science and technology and innovation in the country, uh, what what are the roles? Because India India is actually Uh, uh we can say that we have a very impressive network of institutions uh working on various aspects of science and technology so how uh, uh, how do you envisage the roles and responsibilities of these institutions in promoting uh, disaster research and professionalism uh, dr banari sir uh, well i totally agree with you that india has a very impressive uh, uh, network of institutions there is no denying that Uh, and we have also individually uh, world class experts uh, there i am not uh, very happy with the kind of uh, 
tapping of the potential of these institutions, you know. Sometimes uh, institutions themselves don't know their strength. Every institution should have a SWOT analysis and know where their strengths and weaknesses are. So many of the institutions, uh, they go, uh, they are in their reputation by name. And uh, they are known by that uh, old reputation which they have, may may not have been able to live. But there are many emerging institutions where they have not built that name. And uh, they, they, are, they don't capture imagination. So there has to be a very uh, realistic assessment of the potential, uh, the capacity and potential of this. And also that uh, we have to leverage capacities and use synergy of strengths. You, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to create proliferate institutions and everything like that. Uh, this is a seamless science uh, world where um, uh, every discipline counts, you know, is uh, not a civil engineering or geotechnical engineering that I did. And the number of other disciplines also would come in. So, so long as we know how to use the synergy of strengths, how to pool our resources, and how to leverage our capacities, uh, that too, not nationally, but internationally, my CSIR tenure showed me that one of the things which uh, we don't really do is to see the bigger picture and uh, cooperation to a larger extent. Uh, if, if you permit me, one uh, event I did on the disaster mitigation, when I was looking after the top 10 program at the CSIR, transfer of knowledge to expected mm -hmm. nations. At the same time, the government of India had a program called TCDC program, technical cooperation amongst developing countries. And the third program was a UNISTAR program by United Nations. Yeah. What I did was to marry all these three together and try to create uh, a kind of program drawing the best of the expertise whether they are from developing countries from united nations from there and we had held an event here so uh, uh, this actually is called synergy of strengths the leveraging of capacities so we have to pitch our baskets very high and do that and one thing which uh, uh, the risk uh, i may might not forget uh, i must tell you that now the artificial intelligence uh, the 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 yeah. um, uh, kind of uh, internet of everything, the, the um, uh, digital world we are moving into has got an immense potential and future. Now, when are we going to wake up? Are we, uh, are we going to leave it to the, uh, some institutions who are uh, pursuing this or making software and things like that? Or are we going to unload our problems to them and proactively involve them to solve our problems? So, uh, I came to know in 19, uh, 2017, China uh, had uh, maybe a, uh, 30 university or so, I don't remember the number, but some university united uh, uh, came together to look at the artificial intelligence and their use in early warning and things like that. So, uh, and big data analysis, another thing which I would say that we are now talking about the climate change, about the melting of glaciers on one hand, and the distress to a road length at the other end. So they were very distant um, um, from one another a few years back. But now because of big data, you can collect what happens in the Gangotri Glacier, what happens to a building in um, um, or uh, maybe yeah. Dev Prayag or somewhere specific because all the data can be connected uh, like that. All the events can be connected. What has happened in the uh, Nanda Devi uh, and what happened at um, um, uh, Rishi Ganga and Dhali Ganga and down below at Srinagar, all that be connected by big data. So we should uh, ask these institutions to apply their mind to such of those areas which are emerging areas and then take a lead in that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, very, very nicely you, you explained uh, this point. Uh, and in fact, in fact, talking to you has been really, really wonderful. Uh, a series of questions we thrown to you. Now, uh, Daksab, the last question, because that is very, very important. And that is relating to, to establishing disaster uh, risk management, uh, disaster risk science, or uh, whatever we say, disaster management, disaster science, disaster education, as an academic discipline. Uh, because it has, it has uh, partly a professional angle and on the other hand, it is it is uh, striving to establish itself as an academic uh, discipline. 
So how do you see that uh, in order to promote? Because now, in fact, people are talking that the, even the business continuity should integrate disaster management. Uh, even the health domain, uh, health health education, people are saying that disaster management has to be integrated. Engineering, yes, we have been discussing about. Environmental sciences, we have been discussing about. So how to how to uh, foster this uh, this uh, the, the, this requirement uh, of establishing disaster management as an academic and professional discipline in our country? Well, there is a world of difference between the traditional education we are used to and the disaster education that we want for ourselves. Uh, there are two famous quotes that I remember whenever I talk about instrument, uh, I mean education, I've written about these. Uh, one is that education is an ornament in prosperity and a refuge in uh, adversity. Now, we are talking about this adversity, and uh, I, I tell you this quote, uh, quotation is uh, profound meaning that, uh, you know, whether you need prosperity or your build capacity to deal with adversity is the education to come to your rescue. And secondly, what William Butler Eads said, said, education is not filling the pail, but lighting a fire in you. It's not that uh, I have completed my courses uh, with first rank and I've been awarded and rewarded, therefore I'm an educated person. I think this is a very false meaning most of us carry. And we are happy with the um, uh, chalk and talk kind of education, the, the traditional education. Um, now, in traditional education, you know, we teach first and take tests afterwards. When you talk about disasters, they test you first and educate you afterwards. Just the reverse of it. All disasters put you a test, how prepared you are, and then the teaching begins. So even that teaching, if you don't teach it, it. And so we have to have, uh, actually, if you are looking for uh, good uh, teachers, they will be born from good disasters. I mean, formidable disasters, they will, uh, and, and uh, therefore you have to, uh, the, the disaster set very high standard for your students. And our teachers should also learn to set very high uh, standard for the students of disaster education. Uh, this means in the simple terms that we have to revisit our curricula. Because many of the things, there's no criticism to any uh, institution, but I find that we have not kept with the changing times, our real life problems. Uh, and uh, what we do in the classroom, uh, we are very little relationship. Whether it's the research projects that we identify or the classroom teaching that we have, uh, we find that uh, they are divorced uh, from the ground realities. So I would say that let us uh, coolly sit together, uh, see what we are teaching and how these um, curricula should be changed to ensure that we prepare our um, uh, citizens to face the real life problems there. They were professionals. You know, because um, uh, the traditional uh, teaching has not helped and we no, don't need any proof because uh, for the last 15, 20 years, there's something where we find that a bright young people who go to uh, these edu uh, leading educational institutions, even uh, they are, um, they start their learning only after their graduation is there. I mean, so that is where the curricular area. Then other thing we must uh, tell you, education should prepare um, uh, students, uh, not in uh, telling uh, that how to design safe structures and uh, uh, how to, what to do, what not to do. This is a very, again, a very myopic view. We should say how culture of safety could be established, you know, because one can solve individual problems, but ultimately the country's problem will be solved only by having uh, the culture established. So that reminds me to the Earth Summit where we started talking about culture of safety. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, time and again talked about it, but um, uh, this is uh, not there. So let us use um, uh, the knowledge which is uh, generated so far and then see that we establish culture of safety. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Bandari. A series of questions that we thrown to you. Very nicely you articulated and uh, you, you provided your... I, I think I, I think a, a kind of a 40 years of experience we tried to we tried to to grab some of the best uh, the lessons from your experience uh, though uh, uh, though uh, in fact if we if we keep on talking with you uh, we know we know that uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, knowledge and expertise that you have at your hand and 
so the discussions can go on endless so we will have a series of webinars and a series of discussions and certainly as uh, our executive our director told that very shortly we will have the opportunity to keep uh, uh, to have a face to face interactions so we'll have more and more and more opportunity to uh, to listen to you and learn to you once again congratulations to you for this uh, for this uh, award and and uh, please stay with us as we we, we will be going uh, now to to our commentators they are also the learn ex experts and uh, the, uh, thank you thank you dr now thank now you moving, thank you very much yeah yeah and now thank moving you. to now moving to 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 the first awardee of the national नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस आपदा प्रबंधन पुरस्कार एंड एंड यस वी हैव द प्रोस्पेक्टिव अवार्डीज आर इक्वल इक्वल लेवल एक्सपर्टाइज अवेलेबल हियर सो विल बी लिसनिंग टू देम आल्सो व्हेन व्हेन इट कम्स टू टू टॉकिंग अबाउट डॉक्टर के एम सिंह साहब सो एनडीआरएफ इज अ काइंड ऑफ एनोनिम बिकॉज नाउ नाउ कंट्री कंट्रीज डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एक्चुअली वेन एवर इट इज ए डिजास्टर Uh, so it is it is known by the effective response and it is ndrf and it is his brain child and and uh, 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 we who are working in disaster management we know about his second love also his second love is about the the animal inclusive disaster risk management so so uh, as professor bandari was also referring to that how the nature based solutions are how going to ecosystems are how going to eco friendly solutions so that also relates to this uh, so uh what came to uh, to your mind when we when you uh, thought that uh, the country should have a dedicated uh, disaster response force because none of the countries in the world had this kind of force so so this is one point that uh, we would like to listen from you ken singh saab and second thing uh, 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 the, the government of india has shown a, a kind of a uh, it has uh, striked a quite effective balance because yes emergency response will always remain a kind of a requirement uh, in disaster management but equally important is resilience building and the culture culture of safety so it bestowed an award to you uh, for for promoting effective response and then it bestowed uh, bestowed an award to professor bhandari for for, uh, for for promoting a culture of safety and prevention through through resilience building so so uh, over to you uh, uh, km singh saab sorry uh, please unmute your mic sir yes thank sir thank you mr gupta first of all i must compliment dr bhandari brilliant right covering a wide range of subjects and uh, the plethora of knowledge I think very few people in this country has on the subject of disaster risk reduction or disaster management. So my heart and thank you to the NIDM for organizing this uh, meeting and this talk. Well, Dr. Bhandari has given a very wide perspective, and we have taken a lot of time already. So what you have. discussion all together and uh, we have only taken uh, i think about an hour and hour and a half so i will not like to be very detailed but uh, first of all i must briefly mention about uh, what uh, was the theme of the talk of dr bandari the point is that uh, in our country there is a big gap between policy and implementation uh, we have a lot of policies lot of guidelines lot of plans what it comes to implementation those aligned and was kind of mr swastel there or not but the fact is it and that is because yeah that is because the it seems maybe that in consultation with experts technocrats um, etc what it comes to implementation the experts are not considered at all and there All the policies and what the class example is NDA may have made more than twenty guidelines. And those quite NDA may have made that twenty twenty five times. Hello. Uh, now that part, the subject that you mentioned, how would I? Can you hear me? Some disturbance here. 
तो डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट और डिजास्टर रेस्पॉन्स वो जो सब्जेक्ट टोटली अननोन टू मी टिल टुवर्ड द फैक्ट माय पुलिस कैरियर एंड डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ सीआईएसएफ एंड आफ्टर द गुजरात अर्थक्वेक द कमिटी वाज कंस्टिट्यूटेड इन एमएके अंडर होम सेक्रेटरी मिस्टर गोपाल गोपाल स्वामी टू just they had seen the gujarat earthquake and they had seen how in gujarat earthquake teams from delhi and another country they had the expertise know how equipment training to take out rescue persons from the uh, collapsed structures with so that certain technology which was totally unknown to india so based on that the committee was constituted that uh, under home secretary mr gopal oswami that how to do the disaster response mechanism of india and uh, mr r k s who is now the power minister and home secretary was earlier he was a joint secretary pm and he was the secretary member of the committee and we had three days of discussion about the response mechanism I hope that the case came out with great. That country, which has very high vulnerability, up to on land flow, flow, have response uh, mechanism. Can pass. I need that. We need the country. We should have some response force. What I was, and if I look at why. and the maybe parliament forces country so of course i pitched there yeah, saying that i uh, some all the battalion yes all the yes crp fighting they are with they are dealing with the so we have that sensitivity very very happy i was told that two battalions would be given to fourth i do wish i was and the sf had more time what may be interest and knew that with what cross progress people people get people talk telling anyway we call that visa so he made that the center for the world and then uh we got people sir ki was to yes do not join ho gaye do not be a problem aa raha hai system mein video aur audio se jo hum jaan raha hu ye narmuna ai ke se jaan raha hu ye video aa raha hai we do jagah se join hai ha mujhe ek minute ka karna mera bhi audio pe laga do wo up so that started then of course india is a long struggle how it was but uh, whether it was for training or equipment or land and everything it took it took a long time but then another thing i want to mention was two two is a small point one the area the size that uh, when they are go for rescue the people in the villages have no knowledge how to avoid the children in disaster they like the community awareness thing for so it was not mandated in the ada but they started a system of community awareness program therapy letters that is one 
the india the people for the few people in fruta they come and they start attack because it is a lot and what the is a back here it's a very rapid attack to every one whether at any or at any level and the needs of people are any more the disability is nowhere in the world no mention the disaster the vision of says is a human and property any more is nowhere mentioned is totally lost now. so that's the when i think it was over the world animal protection i started work in that area that's the thing i i think we already have said long term time i don't want to go much but thank you very much for giving this opportunity thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, you kem singh sir uh, thank you and in fact uh, we will have uh, another series of discussion because Uh, your passion for animal centric drr yeah. is very important uh, for all of us and we really want to promote that area so so we'll have uh, more uh, detailed insightful discussion with you on that now moving to uh, to another expert of the day uh, professor vinod uh, uh, sharma sir uh, he has also been our teacher in disaster management one of the pioneers in disaster management uh, uh, he is also the vice chairman of the sikkim state disaster management authority Uh, so, so having having a, uh, a kind of a, uh, a political and bureaucratic position along with uh, an academic uh, uh, expertise at his hand, uh, uh, it would be good uh, to have uh, his reflection uh, on on the entire discourse that we had with uh, Dr. Bhandari and also his experience because uh, he is a blend of uh, the kind of a, a public administration, disaster management, and environment. He is a person of Environmental sciences and has been working, and currently uh, he is heading the disaster management in a hilly state. So his experience and insights on the on the today's uh, discourse. Over to you, uh, Professor Vikas Sharma sir. Thank you very much, Professor uh, uh, Anil ji. Am I audible? Am I? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all. my greetings of basant panchmi this is the day of ma saraswati and i wish that ma saraswati bless all of us and uh, nidm and we whatever we little we are doing should continue in this important area of uh, disaster risk reduction i also congratulate Uh, Shri K M Singh ji. I mean, last time, last year, he got uh, this prestigious award. And uh, this year, I think very well deserved, you know, award was given to Dr. R K Bhandari ji and uh, Seeds India. So I think both the organization, I mean, Seeds is again organization which is. Uh, Uh, very much deserve this uh, type of recognition and uh, i am glad that uh, these person uh, they decorated with this uh, prestigious award there is some uh, noise you know i think uh, in case there are few people who have opened it to you know from two places pp shrivastu ji i think in case you can close from one and uh, then this echo will not be there there are many parts when they have opened two two sources you know from uh, from uh, maybe mobile or uh, their laptop so now now it is okay sir now it is okay sir okay thank you so uh, in fact uh, listening to professor bhandari it is always treat to the ears and uh, he is really i fully agree with km singh ji that uh, very knowledgeable person and uh, i worked with him in high powered it and his his ideas about disaster knowledge network use of science and technology in disaster risk reduction i think this is long back he he is advocating for this thing many things which we are reading in sindai framework 
which we, we discuss it in high powered committee and i am very proud that uh, we had a session of professor arya professor bhandari professor t n gupta and uh, such legend you know who really dedicated uh, people and uh, they have really contributed a lot in this area so listening to him and uh, he again reminded us you know that there are few areas where we should concentrate and uh, we should work you know in himalayan uh, region in coastal region and in the entire country <clears throat> Harshit, kindly uh, mute yourself. Uh, in fact, uh, this echo is coming because of these two things. One is that some uh, people are not muted, and uh, some people have uh, they are uh, you know using two devices. So, but anyway, I will uh, continue and I will just speak for uh, two or three minutes. I will say that uh, uh, this was a uh, very long journey for uh, Mr. Bhandari, and I met several of his colleagues when he was in the CSIR, when he was uh, in Rurki, and uh, everyone, you know, appreciate his uh, way of working and uh, his dedication, you know, to the subject. Um, I remember that uh, he presented a document on disaster knowledge network, and I'm still having a copy of that. I think there is a need of this thing. When we say disaster preparedness, knowledge network or information base, this is very important area. And uh, I think uh, I, I fully agree with uh, Anilji that uh, countries having unique NDRF or National Disaster Response Force, which is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, created by NDMA and uh, KM Singh Ji played very important role in that. But I think there is more work required on, uh, on preparedness, mitigation, resilience. These should be our focus. And uh, when we talk about even response, I mean, more training required to the community because there is no end. How many battalions, how many, you know, in case we go for this kind of thing and again, response centric mechanism, I think that will not be good for the country. We should focus on local communities, strengthen them, and uh, we are doing it, you know, we have started rather in, in Sikkim. We are having 25 panchayats and these panchayats we are, we have given about 4 lakh rupees equipment. We told them that what is your vulnerability? What can happen? And what you can do, you know, in case there is a disaster happen. So I think that kind of approach we have started and people uh, are appreciating that. People are saying that uh, now we will not wait for the SDRF or NDRF and they feel that we, we I mean, we have a strength that we can meet a small eventuality or something in case it happens. So I think when we say resilience, I think resilience will come when people are empowered when they feel that yes we can and the type of preparedness which we are talking at community level we will have to promote local because every area in country you have 16 agroclimatic zone you have himalayan region you have coastal region the you know issues are different and you cannot have uh, you know, trained manpower or trained people or, uh, you know, professionals who can deal with that unless and until local people are involved in that. So I think this, this mix is required. In the country, we should go more on, on uh, mitigation and resilience thing. And mitigation, I think I'm so glad 
when finance commission gave us national mitigation fund and this fund available with the center and with the state i think lot of things you will see in coming years one more thing i will say dr gupta that uh, country is having lots of knowledge now so this knowledge of about uh, 33 34 natural disasters and even man made disasters i think this repository you know this sh we should collect somewhere and the scientific knowledge and traditional knowledge in case we can use it and little you know formal informal module and give this knowledge to the community i think we can achieve a lot and uh, the 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 way nidm is taking uh, you know national priorities or national thing prime minister's uh, 10 point agenda sindai framework i mean this is required this is the national level thing which you are, you guys are doing even in the covid days i think the contribution of nidm is uh, i mean we should appreciate that uh, some of the important issues you highlighted and uh, try to give to the people to the officers to the community the uh, you know initiative which is started by ugc and by nidm that uh, disaster education i think that is equally important and disaster education in which form we should give a separate curriculum or a separate subject this is again a, a point to be discussed and uh, people like bhandari ji am singh saab pp shrivastav ji who are who have devoted you know their time in this i think they will decide and they should decide that what kind of education required and uh, yesterday i was talking on all india radio and uh, many questions were there that we have done this certificate course but we couldn't get any job i have done you know this masters course from punjab university but there is no job so i think this kind of thing students are interested you know people wants to know about disaster management but what is the scope is really country is connecting development with the disaster risk reduction and in case yes then definitely the knowledge which we, these people are getting in tata institute of social sciences or in punjab university or in indraprasth university or so on and so forth definitely you know these people should be well placed and should get right position in district administration is state administration and uh, in some or the other way i think their knowledge can be utilized it should be utilized so professor gupta i think we should discuss this in a separate forum that what kind of disaster education what kind of awareness you know and the difference between education training awareness i think that we will have to decide and go ahead i thank you very much you know and once again i compliment congratulate my two seniors uh, bhandari saab is uh, you know one of the mentors actually and uh, uh, he is one person you know you love to talk to him and uh, such a dedication such a a person you know very well deserved uh, uh, you know this award uh, i compliment him once again pp shrivastav ji is uh, uh, we are we are working you know in the northeast and uh, having enormous knowledge and uh, i am here to listen to him now so over to you, you. professor gupta sir. thank you sir thank you sir and i totally agree with you and we will have a detailed discussion on uh, promoting uh, promoting disaster management education and your point that it should be it should be uh, linked with uh, the the kind of utilization of the professional expertise so that is very important so how the curriculum should be designed as uh, professor bandari also referred to this point and uh, and uh, it should be a kind of a blend of theory and practice that is important as uh, referred uh, in the previous discussions also 
now it is it is my opportunity it is an opportunity that now i move to uh, shri pp shrivasoji who had a vast knowledge and expertise working as uh, the member of the north uh, eastern council and uh, is a very passionate about uh, promoting disaster management uh, pp shrivasoji sir we are not able to see you you are here uh, from three three uh, systems uh, pp shrivasoji sir अदरवाइज एक को आएगा बहुत हेलो श्रीवास्तव साहब सर एक सिस्टम से रखिए दो दो को बंद कर दीजिए श्रीवास्तव सर श्रीवास्तव सर कैन यू हेयर कैन यू हेयर मी सर आपका जी आपका तीन जगह से लॉगिन है जिसकी वजह से इको आ रहा है सर वही मैं बंद एक मैंने तो एक ही जगह कर रखा है मैंने एक ही जगह कर रखा है पता नहीं तीन कहा से हो गया लॉग ऑफ जी जी आपको लॉग ऑफ करना पड़ेगा सर अदरवाइज ये नाउ इट इज शोइंग फ्रॉम फोर प्लेसेस जी सर अभी दो है सर जी जी अब आप एक से एक से कर सकते हैं यस सर नाउ नाउ इट नाउ इट इज ऑल राइट यस सर इज इट ओनली वन सिस्टम नाउ यस सर रेस्ट ऑल कैन म्यूट हर्षित यू ऑल्सो म्यूट हर्षित आप भी म्यूट कर दें नहीं हो रहा है सर सर थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग एंड यू यू लिसन टू दर डिस्कोर्स विद डॉक्टर भंडारी साहब एंड ट्रू टू अदर कॉमेंट्रेटर्स नाउ विद योर वास एक्सपर्टाइज वर्किंग इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट एंड the kind of passion you uh, you had in promoting disaster management and you always supported uh, our endeavors in idm also and otherwise uh, in disaster management you have been very actively involved in uh, the uh, indian academy of uh, the engineers also and uh, uh, it is it is really a uh, a matter of pleasure to, to listen to your uh, reflections on today's uh, discourse so uh, briefly uh, sir we would like to have your uh, your, your your comment on the uh, the day's discourse and a uh, two three key points that you would like to make sir uh, can you hear me ji uh, ji you are hearing me more i mean more echo the sorry it is not working आई थिंक आई थिंक देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम विद 
with uh, sir no it's okay uh, sir please Uh, Dipishwasa, sir. From here. So let, let us let us uh, try if uh, Dipishwasa sir can speak. If uh, Shwasa sir, can can you hear me? G G G G. Please please बोलने sir. तो फिर ऐसा करते हैं. जी सर वीडियो को रहने दे आई नहीं रहा है मैंने बंद कर दिया हाँ, तो कोई बात नहीं सर जी सर जी सर वेलकम सर प्लीज यस सर यू यू कैन स्पीक सर प्लीज सर नाउ से आई रिप्रेजेंट द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ द बेनिफिशियरीज ऑफ ऑल द डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एफर्ट दैट द कंट्री एंड द साइंटिस्ट आर मेकिंग सो आई स्पीक फ्रॉम दैट वी फील इज Uh, at this point was raised by professor sharma also in fact professor sharma i have been uh, he has been my teacher in uh, disaster management i attended his course in iipa after coming back from northeast so that <laughs> uh, that was in the 90s uh, the point is that uh, there is something fundamentally wrong uh, in the uh, in priorities the common man has still to feel that saving his own life is his first prime duty and saving the life of his near and dear ones but the tendency is to depend on uh, the government or blame the government if nothing happens that point has been raised can you hear me hello ji 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 da sir ha ah, so yes sir please yes yeah. that point has been raised already here the only way to do it it will take its own time the only way to do it is through our schools primary schools onward this thing has to be and sikkim has done it professor sharma has done it uh, already attempted it and i hope his experiment would succeed would be uh, emulated by uh, other states and it succeeds second point is the uh, multi uh, the uh, you see uh, somehow specialization has is coming in the way the disasters the nature of disasters whether it is earthquake or it is landslide uh, is such that it requires various disciplines of the site for example the uh, uh, landslides they require so many branches of geo technology geology engineering and other sciences it has not been uh, you know uh, somehow it has not been possible to uh, pull all that together and work as a team now professor bandari did some path breaking work in it in 2015 i uh, thanks to him i was also a part of it and we uh, produced a report signed by unanimous reports recommendations signed by all of us and uh, uh, no uh, vital branch of science was uh, excluded every top level people from all the concerned authorities whether it was geology health survey of india or um, uh, imae was there and everybody even that report that was submitted to ndma ndma considered it it was interested to gsi that was i think two years back now i don't know what has happened i tried to pursue it but then uh, covid came in the way so what we need to do is that the uh, strategy a methodology has been prescribed by all technical brains pulled together that has to be applied for that also we have got a, a and this is a way of science experiment observation inference so this experiment has to be done now we have got in sikkim thanks to the sikkim government thanks to professor vk sharma we have got a site a chandmari site where the population about 6 to 7000 people are endangered because their houses are there pakka houses and down below down slope also another 11 12000 population is there so these things are in danger uh several years back three years four years back 
and Ministry of Earth Sciences sanctioned it. Professor uh, Shalesh Nayak he, he, he sanctioned it, and we uh, in, in, take took the first step early warning system that is has been working, but that is only halfway house. What we need to do is to save their lives uh, and uh, to remove the danger for all time to come. And that is possible. Why not this, te this technology, this uh, uh, suggested by IMAE group, by Dr. Bhandari, why should it not be applied? What is uh, hampering that? Now, that is th these are the issues which we have to resolve. Otherwise, Dr. Bhandari has done wonderful work, everybody knows. And his words are such that they convey such, uh, you know, um, take the meaning to the depths of the time. We started in 2006. We started after the uh, NDMA was made. We introduced the subject and uh, started popularizing it in the eight states of uh, Northeast, eight Northeastern states. At the level of chief minister, we organized a meeting. Uh, and I was as a member of Northeastern Council. I was given the status of a union minister of state. So there was no problem in communication with the highest levels. So we organized it at chief minister's level. And in Shillong, Dr. we invited eminent scientist, Dr. Bandari was kind enough to join us. And his talks there, we invited, the, we included the students there. Lady Keen College, the whole girls were included in that. And they were so much enthused that even till today, they are interested in uh, disaster management and they are propagating, they are doing their own bit. So that is the way uh, uh, which will make the community aware and conscious of its needs. And then we have also to tell them about the ancient Indian philosophy also. After all, Panchitattvas are the five elements, you know, Agni, uh, Prithvi, Jal, Vayu, uh, etc. These are the five elements of which the body is made, the entire universe is made. And if we tell them that, look here, to protect, uh, you have to give way to the forces of nature, to these uh, who follow, which follow the laws of nature scrupulously. You have to uh, make way for them when they are trying to restore the balance of the universe, and then it will be become more easy to uh, uh, for them to understand and grasp it. Our tribal people in the northeast, hill tribal, especially those who are living in remote areas, they have got this fifth, uh, sixth sense, and they locate their they have located their old ancient villages at places which have not been affected by either earthquake or floods or anything, uh, you know, those traditional, old traditional things. Newer settlements, they are all being getting affected, but the old are not. They have got that. They, as Dr. Bandari says, we must learn to talk to nature, to observe nature, to uh, and not to confrontation, but with a, in tune with nature, we have to work. Now that is the best lesson that he has given and we are trying to follow. And here, I must congratulate uh, NIDM General Bindal and his, you know, Professor Gupta, uh, Suri Prakash Ji, and uh, uh, Santosh Kumar Ji. The wonderful work has been done. The um, way they have utilized this COVID-19 period, one year or so, uh, in propagating the disaster management, despite all these things, has been admirable. The message has, must have gone to a very large number of people. What I would now appeal to them is to now take up this experiment of applying that uh, principles of uh, 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 permanent eradication of the landslide menace from the Chanmari site in Sikkim, and then that will that will establish uh, point out if there are any shortcomings, which I don't think there are any. But it will create a such model of success, which could be emulated all over in all the thousands of sites which are uh, posing a danger. Uh, that is what I would like to say, and that is what I would like to appeal to Dr. Vandari also, Professor uh, Sharma also, and KM Singh Saab has been, we have been old colleagues working together right from the day 
NDMA was constituted and he was in charge of the Northeast. So I had privilege of working with him. So uh, all support from all the people and then we shall be able to uh, really, really solve the problem for which we are all trying to uh, meet and do everything. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Shwasa Saab, and uh, we, we thank God and that we have been able to listen to you. Otherwise, we were thinking that because of the technical uh, issue, we would uh, miss listening to you. But, and, and thanks to you for, uh, for uh, making it possible to join. And uh, you, you uh, very nicely uh, uh, put in all your experience uh, working in the bureaucratic system and working uh, with your, uh, that, the person that we know. Uh, about disaster management and particularly uh, the challenges of the uh, mountain areas and uh, uh, so we are we are really very 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 fortunate to have the kind of panel that we had as uh, in the beginning also we said that uh, uh, four, uh, four four uh, real gurus of disaster management and uh, uh, as as have been recommended by all uh, that the kind of curriculum that we are discussing, we are we are thinking. So we'll be coming to you all uh, for for your uh, insights and guidance uh, for our uh, the, for uh, uh, working on the curriculum of the courses that we are we are thinking that uh, in the, from the new campus of NIDM as the NIDM yes. is going to uh, very soon inaugurate the new campus from uh, the, that is uh, in Rohini. Although it is little, uh, little in the outskirts, but uh, yes, we have all the facilities there. Uh, so, so we'll be coming to you uh, for your uh, for your guidance. And uh, uh, our executive director had to leave for some some uh, important issue, and uh, he has conveyed his sincere uh, thanks on behalf of an IDM and on his uh, personal behalf, and on uh, on behalf of the entire disaster management fraternity. I am very, very uh, happy and uh, uh, to, to acknowledge uh, that uh, uh, Bandari sir, Jam uh, 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 Singh sahab, uh, P.P. Shrosto sahab, uh, V.K. Sharma sahab, all uh, uh, agreed to join this uh, individual and uh, uh, helped us uh, uh, organize this uh, discussion, which is very, very important. And very shortly, we'll be, co we'll be coming to you with a brief report uh, as as there are very very important points that have emerged from today's discussion and uh, that will uh, serve as kind of a guiding points uh, for all of us who are working in disaster management so thank you uh, thank you very much and uh, thanks to all the participants and i would go back to to fatima fatima amin uh, for for a formal vote of thanks fatima please <laughs> Uh, good afternoon. So, on the behalf of the National Institute of Disaster Management, I take this opportunity to to those who all have directly and indirectly contributed to this uh, webinar come uh, uh, interview. I give a really heart thanks to our uh, expert of the day, uh, Dr. R. K. Bandari sir, who spent his busiest time gracing this occasion. Uh, I uh, thank uh, our expert commentator, Sri uh, K. M. Singh Sir, uh, Professor V. K. Sharma Sir, and Sri P. 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 Shiva. So today we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts, and uh, this is definitely encouraging us in our future events. Uh, your thoughts have enlightened our mind and shown us new path. Thanks to the all, uh, thanks to all for ador adorning the occasion and sharing their opinions today. Uh, I uh, I would also thank uh, Mr. Harshad Sharma, who is the coordinator of the program, uh, for his support. I thank all for you for sparing some time for this. I take this uh, take thank our participants for listening us and sparing their valuable time for <coughs> us. Thank you so uh, all and uh, thank you, uh, Professor Anil Kumar Gupta sir for giving me this opportunity uh, to uh, host, uh, coordinate this event. Uh, I'll hope uh, I'll have some much more events in future uh, like this. Thank you so much, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anil. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच सर आपका बुक बुक्स का कलेक्शन मुझे दिख रहा है सर दिस इज माय लाइब्रेरी सर 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 अभी थोड़ा सा फेस टू फेस शुरू होगा देन देन समटाइम्स ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू शुभ सर थैंक यू नमो नमस्कार एवरीवन हेलो हेलो